Hi, I'm ready to show you how to write rate equations, rate laws from elementary steps. Now you rec will recall this is molecularity. Um, so these elementary steps is what happens right here at the transition state. It's what comes from the mind of a chemist. It's um, our best guess using chemical intuition. What is our best guess of how reactants break and how products form? And from that, we come up with these elementary steps. Um, so all of this is in the mind of the chemist. Now that having been said, because this is something that we're theorizing, there's a cheat when we write the rate equations, when we write the rate laws. And here's the cheat. The number of reactants equals the overall order of the reaction. Now I have to pause. If you were um, trying to find the rate law and using experimental data, you would have to calculate the orders from that data. Um, I was very emphatic um, on the uh, video where I shared about calculating the orders that you have to have data for that. Well, this is an exception because this is all in our brains. That we're making this up. Uh, we really don't know how those reactants break, how those products form. form. And so because this is all in the theory world anyway, <laughs> well, let's take it another step. And we're going to pretend that um, whatever the number of reactants is, that that's the order of the reaction. So what I show you here, you cannot apply to um, a situation when you're given data, okay? This is only when you have molecularity. When you have molecularity, then we can assume that the order of the reaction equals the number of reactants. Okay, so keep those separate in your brain. Data, you've got to do the math. Molecularity, great. We're going to fudge this a little bit because we're using chemical intuition in the theory world. Um, okay, so to write the rate laws is actually really, really easy for molecularity. These are all elementary steps. They're a single molecular event that happens right here when reactants break product form. You write and start by writing rate equals the rate constant, and then you simply write down your reactants. And whatever the coefficient is, that is your order. So I've got one O3, one ozone, so this is going to be a first order. Um, and then notice with a unimolecular, and you can watch that video if you need to look at terms, when I've got one reactant, so um, one reactant in this elementary step called unimolecular, unimolecular is always going to be a first order rate law, first order rate equation. Um, so let's keep going. Let's write the rate law for this elementary step. We've got rate equals K, and then again, I just write down the reactants, and the coefficient becomes the exponent, the order. So we have ozone, O3, to the first order, because that's understood to be a one, times oxygen, and that is also a one. So notice this, I've got two reactants. They each have an exponent of one, so those are the orders, one and one. The overall rate order, one plus one is two. It's second order because I've got two reactants. Um, and again, we can do this because we made it up anyway. It all came from our brains. Um, okay, let's look at this one. This is kind of interesting. Ray equals K. Write down my reactant. Well, the only species I have here is ozone, but I've got two of those. So that becomes the order. This is going to be a second order overall reaction because of that two right there. Um, so this, even though it's only one species, I've got two of them. So technically there are two reactants. I could rewrite this as O3 plus O3, right? I just got two of those collide, hit each other, and it produces the three moles of the O2. So I still have two reactants is going to be a second order reaction. Just wanted you to know that if you have the same species, but two of them, you still have two reactants. It's going to be second order. Okay, so that was a bimolecular. These two are bimolecular examples because you have two reactants. This is going to be a termolecular when you have three or more reactants. And remember, these are really rare because it would be extremely improbable for three reactants to hit with proper energy and correct orientation all at the same time. Okay, let's go ahead and write down our reactants with the coefficient as the exponent, the order. We will have rate equals K times the concentration of A to the second order, because of that coefficient, times the concentration of B to the first order, because its coefficient is understood to be a one. 
Now, if we add this up, we have two plus one is three. That's a third order reaction because it's termolecular. I have one, two, three total reactants. So pretty straightforward. What you have to remember is this is all about molecularity. When you are dealing with elementary steps molecularity, this is the only time, only, only, only time that you can take coefficients and make those the orders. And again, is because it's all theoretical anyway. If you're given data, you have to do the math to find the orders M and N. And you can watch the videos on determining the rate equation. Okay, good work, thanks.